deeper offshore North Carolina. Do you expect any drilling? Well, Larry, uh, this is a, a nod in the right direction. The question is, is this really a wink and a nod from the president? Uh, the truth is that uh, we can put together an energy plan, but not one that deals with carbon or, or uh, climate uh, effects. Uh, I, I don't think they can get it through Congress, and certainly I'm not going to be there to help. Let me just ask you, sir, just on, on some of the specifics. As I understand it, in order to, to put these leases up for sale, you, you still have to go through a congressional process. In other words, President Bush put a moratorium. He, he put he, he put a moratorium on the end to drilling. He put an end to that. Congress let it run out. The moratorium ran out back in uh, 2008. Now, what happens now? Even if Mr. Obama wants it, will he get even what he wants without congressional authorization? Well, I can tell you this, Larry, he's not going to get it without uh, some type of uh, cost share, revenue share with the states. And I think the Secretary of the Interior went out and very quickly said there's not going to be a revenue share. Um, I, who knows exactly how they're going to move forward, whether it's going to be uh, during the regular session or in a lame duck session. But I, I know this, that American business needs predictable energy pricing for the future. If the president was smart. He'd drop cap and trade. Uh, he would look at how we can match nuclear and natural gas and domestic production. And yeah, we can become less reliant on foreign oil. Uh, but the president's setting this up as an either or, and I'm not sure that they're going to move the, the ball down the field at all. Well, let me ask you about drop and cap and trade, because that's really the next thing. Has President Obama, in some sense, outfoxed the Republican caucus by putting this offshore drilling in? He's also got a small uh, nuclear piece in there. And, of course, he's got his green energy. Your colleague, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, is working with John Kerry of Massachusetts, Joe Lieberman of Connecticut, for a kind of, it's sometimes called the tripartisan cap-and-trade bill that would fence off, if I understand it, you know more about this, but it would set carbon caps on manufacturers, utilities, refining maybe others so it's not one size fits all but it does suggest a comprehensive carbon control plan did president obama today outfox the republican caucus i don't think he did and i i think to suggest it might even say that he tried to outfox his own democrats in the united states senate and house that come from states that they're not going to support a carbon-based uh, piece of legislation. At the end of the day, uh, it's important that we look at the entire piece of legislation. And I, I believe that Republicans and Democrats will voice opposition to anything with carbon uh, that might come out of the White House. I, I commend Lindsey Graham for trying to push the envelope, but I can't support uh, any carbon legislation because it penalizes states. And Larry, I think you would agree, the federal government's doing unnatural things today. And the last thing I want them to do is pick winners and losers based upon which state you come from. Well, I do totally agree with that, sir. And that's, I guess, my next question. Is there enough of a caucus of support for a more free market deregulation of energy? Energy is one of America's greatest industries and a potential unbelievable job creator, as I'm sure you know. And I'm talking about all the above. I'm talking about the nuclear. I'm talking about clean coal. I'm talking about natural gas. I'm talking about oil. And yes, I'm talking about the so-called renewable green fuels, only I want the marketplace to do it, not the government. Why is it that we are in this position? And George Bush was guilty of this too, of wanting government control and shackles and, you know, directing resources and money and loans and guarantees and all this stuff. Why is, why can't we just go free well, market? Well, typically when government gets involved, we uh, make investments in the wrong technologies. Uh, we waste a lot of money. What we want to do is unleash the entrepreneurship of America. We want to go to the research bench and say, give us a game changer for energy. Every American wants to be less reliant on the Middle East for oil. But the only way we're going to get there is if we do all the above. And when the president talks about opening up new territory, but he takes the, the, the California coast off the table, he takes uh, the bays in southern Alaska off the table, these are the most productive immediately. And when you say that we're going to open it up for exploration, that doesn't mean that it's going to be permitted and that we're going to go for exploration. We've got to drill onshore and offshore. We've got to drill everywhere if, in fact, we want to be less reliant on the Middle East. Well, you know, you've got people up on Wall Street who are skeptical that these um, sales of leases will ever happen. 
that there has to be oh, the, I think I, the government has to vet this stuff for environmental stuff and we're worried about you know uh, damaging endangered species glowworms and things like that i mean is any of this going to happen well, I'm not sure that uh, it is. I, that's why I said we've seen a nod in the right direction, but is there a wink to follow, meaning I never intended this to happen? The truth is that we're beholding to those government agencies that issue permits, and it really doesn't matter whether it's exploration offshore or whether it's the build out of nuclear that we need. Larry, if we could wave a magic wand today, we'd have an energy bill that married nuclear and natural gas. Let's incorporate the good uh, thoughts of Boone Pickens. Let's begin to use natural gas. We've got a 200 year supply in a different way, but let's, let's not leave behind the basket of domestic production that's so important, and that includes renewables and new technology. So just to finalize this, will the Senate and the House uh, vote for this offshore drilling, even limited as it is? Oh, I think if it were a standalone bill, we would uh, vote for it to move it ahead. If it's tied to uh, uh, some type of uh, cap and trade legislation, it's a non starter in the United States Senate on both sides of the aisle. So it's possible nothing may come of today's speech, that you may not get any new leases. Well, Larry, I think you and I both know the Senate's next probably going to go to financial regulation. Right. It's not going to go to energy. And uh, the truth is that this is a little filler teaser by the president. Uh, if he really means what he says, then come to Congress, invite us down to the White House. We'll sit down and map out a way. But don't make it conditional upon whether cap and trade is part of it. All right, Senator Richard Byrne, North Carolina. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thanks, the insight Larry. very much. Now, here my.